Good morning, agents, and welcome to another daily episode of Target to Loot Today, your daily farming guide for Monday, February 1st. In this series, we cover a lot. We got the Target to Loot map, Dark Zone exclusives, highlights for the weekly vendor resets, and build and farming suggestions as well. This is Shadow Gaming, and if you're new to the channel or enjoy this video, consider pressing the thumbs up and subscribe buttons below, and if you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Always remember to hit those bell notification icons to all so you never miss a daily morning video, and comment below if you have any feedback or questions whatsoever, otherwise let's get this video started. Alright agents, so starting off with the dark zones and of course vendor reset highlights which are in that big bottom left overlay that pops up right now. There's a lot of good stuff to pick up this week and today's the last day to pick it up. It resets tomorrow so make sure to grab whatever you need out of that list. I highly suggest the Dark Winter over in DZ South for sure, the Death Grips over here in DZ West, the Mop at the Theater, and the White House, the Anarchist Cookbook, and the Clan, the Contractor's Gloves. As far as Dark Zones go, there is only one Dark Zone exclusive in DZ uh, East. You know, over here in DZ West, there's China Light. I don't recommend farming, you know, non-Dark Zone exclusives in the Dark Zone because the loot quality is just usually pretty too low. But over here in DZ East, you can farm for the Hollow Man Mask, which gives you 8% damage to health, which is definitely worth farming for, for sure. So, you know, try to farm for that today. Otherwise, there's no other Dark Zone exclusives, so let's go check out what we got on the north side. Alright guys, north side target Alu highlights, starting off with the invaded missions, we got Federal Emergency Bunker, and then Potomac Event Center, Lincoln Memorial, and the two strongholds is Roosevelt Island and Tidal Basin Stronghold. Back over here on the north side, we got Camp White Oak, Aces and Eights, great headshot gear set. So what you want to do is mix three pieces of Aces and Eights with two pieces of Araldo Holding. One of those being a backpack with Composure or my favorite Vigilance. And then the Chain Killer chest piece with Perfect Headhunter. And primary weapon would be Mantis with Ekim's Long Stick with Perfect Ranger as your secondary. Next up we got some machine guns at Coney Island Ballpark, great place to farm, as well as three exotic SMGs in this game that you can farm for, the first off being the Chatterbox, the Lady Death, and then the Backfire exotic SMG. The Chatterbox is quest only, so I'll put my Chatterbox quick 5 minute video guide in the top right card now. Otherwise the Lady Death and the Backfire you could just straight up farm for, the Backfire you're going to need a lot of hazard protection, around 90% or so to stop that bleed. And the Lady Death just kind of doesn't have any downfalls except for it has 32 rounds in the magazine. Otherwise, the Dark Winter and the Apartment are Dark Zone exclusive SMGs. You can purchase the Dark Winter and the DZ South Vendor just today and that's it. It's going to reset tomorrow so grab it today for sure. And reroll that third attribute slot for 10% damage targets out of cover. And then lastly, the two named ones that drop in the light zone that I'd recommend is the Safety Distance with Perfect Outsider and the Grudge with Perfect Vindictive. Both of those are highly worth farming for in the light zone for their own respective builds. Next up, we got Hardwired to Coney Island Amusement Park. So really just a subscriber, you know, recommended this to me from Running Butcher. He's got a pretty great build with this and I'll give it to you in the bottom left overlay. As well as a link to this video in the pinned comment section below. It's four pieces of hardwired and then a China Light chest piece with glass cannon and the vial mask. And I believe he's running the jammer pulse and a bulwark shield. Next up, last one we got is gloves at Manning National Zoo. Now, of course, Manning National Zoo isn't invaded or anything, but you can still farm for the BTSU data gloves, which grant overcharge to you or any ally that's at skill tier six. And of course, you could also farm for the Contractor's Gloves with 8% damage to armor, which is great for any LMG build or if you're stacking damage to armor with Walker Harrison Co. The Lady Death or, you know, Assault Rifles in general. Otherwise, you could farm the Petrov, you know, area for that if you want to, if it's available on the map today. And then, of course, Kinley College is closed and the summit you pick your own targeted loot. Remember, tomorrow, title update 12.1 comes out with the new Resident Evil apparel event and then also the optimization station costs are dropping by 75 percent which is huge so otherwise let's go check out the west and east sides now all right agents west side target alu highlights starting off with the contractor's gloves over here at dcd headquarters where petrov is at i just wanted to mention that real quick i would farm here instead of over there at the manning national zoo for the contractor's gloves Otherwise, the only few gear sets we got is a close protocol at Bank HQ. I'll put my fire damage build in the top right card now. And that, of course, is four pieces of a close protocol, the Imperial Dynasty holster, and then one piece of Golan gear for an extra 10% status effects. This is great running with the Stinger Hive and the Firestarter Chem Launcher and the Pyromaniac Assault Rifle. 
And then the last uh, gear sets we got is Hunter's Fury at DARPA Research Labs. Another amazing build I got. Probably my favorite build in this entire game right now. It's going to be in the top title card right now, which is four pieces of Hunter's Fury, the Memento Backpack. And then of course the death grip gloves with that 10% armor on kill. And then I always run the dark winner and the Scorpio with that. Three armor cores, four weapon cores, and a skill tier from the Memento backpack. As an alternative though, you can run four pieces of Hunter's Fury, a Sokolov chest with Intimidate, or my favorite, Obliterate, and the Memento backpack. And I still run the same weapons and armor cores and weapon cores. And then lastly, we got Future Initiative at the Pentagon. So of course, remember the chest and backpack are Iron Horse Raid exclusive. So keep that in mind when farming for this. It's a great healer set. And if you don't want to run the raid or can't for whatever reason, remember you could always join the Shadow Crew Clan on PC, Xbox, or PS4. And then of course, if you don't want to do that or join our Discord for some help with the uh, Iron Horse Raid, then what you could do is put together a non-raid healer build, which is like an Alp Summit chest piece with Empathetic Resolve and like a Murakami or Richter and Kaiser backpack with Safeguard on it. For normal targeted loot, let's start off with knee pads at Lincoln Memorial. You got two exotics, the Ninja Bike Messenger knee pads and Sawyer's knee pads, both of which are really good for their own respective builds. You know, of course, Ninja Bike Messenger knee pads is run and gun. You know, you are vaulting and cover to cover for 25% bonus armor and instantly reloading your equipped weapon. And then for the Sawyers, it's sitting still every one second, gives you 1% weapon damage up to 30% weapon damage. You could also farm for the Fox's Prayer knee pads with 8% damage targets out of cover. That's multiplicative damage, the best type of damage in this game, but I would highly recommend farming Overlord in Downtown East today for that. And then of course we got LMGs over here at Potomac Event Center. Definitely worth farming for for the two exotics, the Bullet King and the Pestilence. The Bullet King you never have to reload, but the base damage is a little bit lower. And the Pestilence is like a six and a half second reload, but the damage tick you can get over to a million per tick. Of course that's based off weapon damage, not status effects. So always keep that in mind. That can get confusing sometimes. You know, my Negotiator's Dilemma build hits for a million over a tick because it's based into weapon damage. Otherwise, there's a bunch of named LMGs you could farm for in the bottom left overlay. The Black Friday with Perfectly Unhinged is a Dark Zone exclusive. Otherwise, the rest of them you are safe to farm for in the Light Zone. And I almost missed it, but we got holsters at Tidal Base and Stronghold. You got three exotic holsters. First off, the Waveform, which you get at Season 4, Level 90. And then the other two is the Imperial Dynasty holster and the Dodge City holster. Now, of course, the Dodge City holster is for pistol builds or headshot damage builds. The Imperial Dynasty is great for setting everyone on fire, like without a close protocol build. And the Waveform is my favorite for the turret and drone builds. And then of course you can also farm for the forge which gives you 50% extra shield health which is equivalent to a whole extra skill tier worth of shield health so keep that in mind when you're picking that or the claws out for your shield builds. And then we got Murakami here at Constitutional Hall. One of my favorites when you're mixing the Memento turret and drone build because you're looking for a lot of duration at least I am instead of skill haste on those builds. Because skill haste can only get you so far until your turret and drone are at the 12 and like 15 second cooldowns. Then you want to spec everything else into skill duration so they last almost forever. And then of course we got backpacks at Downtown West. Speaking of the Memento with kill confirmed, you can get that today. And the Acosta's go bag with one in the hand. Those are the two exotic backpacks in this game. And both of them just require that you farm backpack targeted loot. You got multiple control points here that are also manhunt. So definitely check that area out today, especially if you need the Memento or the Acosta's go bag. And then lastly, we'll mention Providence Defense at West End. You could farm the Sacrifice with Perfect Glass Cannon, amplifying all damage you deal by 30%, but amplifying all damage against you by 60%. That makes you really squishy and shred like paper, but you know, because it amplifies, which is multiplicative damage, but it also amplifies your damage, which makes you shred everything else like paper as well. Big risk versus reward scenario. Otherwise, you could farm for other Providence defense pieces. The gift with perfect vigilance is a Dark Zone exclusive backpack, but otherwise, that's about it for the west side. Let's go check out now what we got on the east side. All right, agents, east side target Alu highlights. Starting off with the gear sets, let's go with Negotiator's Dilemma first at Space Administration HQ. Now, I got a great double LMG build that I'll put in the top title card right now. If I have enough, if not, I'll make sure to place it in the pinned comment below. That, of course, is four pieces of Negotiator's Dilemma, the Coyote's Mask, and the Grupo Slumbro Gloves if you're running an AR or SMG, and Contractor's Gloves if you're running LMGs like the Pestilence or the Bullet King. Great crowd control DPS build. I highly recommend it. And moving on to the next one, we got Foundry Bulwark at Jefferson Plaza. 
Now, of course, just like Future Initiative, the chest and backpack are Iron, Heart, Iron Horse Raid exclusive, so keep that in mind when farming for Foundry Bulwark. Otherwise, what I would do is spec in the armor region non-stop, get the Emperor's Guard knee pads with 1% armor region, which are DZ exclusive knee pads. And then if you don't have the chest and backpack, put on a chest and backpack or pieces of Bellstone Armory for extra armor region. And then the last two we got is Tip of the Spear over here at Judiciary Square. I usually skip this. I don't recommend it because it just kind of increases specialization weapon damage and I never use it. And Rigor over here at American History Museum is definitely worth it. Now this makes it to where when you cancel or destroy a skill, you know, it just gives you instant cooldowns and it gives you skill damage when you change a target or cancel a, you know, skill. I think it is better than Hardwired. You know, I think it's the successor, just like Hardwired used to give you instant cooldowns but that's just my own personal preference. Otherwise, I don't have an exact build for you guys yet. I'm kind of tinkering with four pieces of rigor, China light, and vile mass, just kind of like the hardwired one, but I'm still messing with it. I don't want to give it out just yet. For regular target loot, we got Hana Yu as Southwest. You can farm that Force Multiplier backpack with perfect combined arms, giving you 30% skill damage every three seconds you land a shot, but requires you to be firing all the time. So if you don't like that, you can of course go for, you know, like the tech support talent on your backpack or even the percussive maintenance with perfect tech support, but unfortunately it's on an Alp Summit backpack, which gives you 25% skill damage for 25 seconds. It's basically always active. Next up, we got shotguns at Aerodin Space Museum. Now you got two exotics, the Sweet Dreams with the Sandman Talon and the Scorpio with Septic Shock. I think that the Sandman Talon is pretty good. You know, melee, one hit kill, any red or purple barred enemy every 15 seconds. And then for the Scorpio with Septic Shock, I mean, you poison, then confuse, then shock, then give a 20% damage debuff on your enemies. I mean, and it goes great on any build, tank, skill, or DPS. I highly recommend it, it's rewarded at season 4 level 55 or you could just farm shotguns targeting loot. Otherwise the other 4 best shotguns in this game is the rock and roll shotgun with perfectly extra which is a DZ exclusive and the mop with 10% armor on kill. And then the other 2 is the custom M870 and the marine super 90 and both of those are all, four, or all 3 of them rolled with close and personal on them. Keep the perfectly extra of course on the rock and roll since you can't change it anyway. Next up, we got Assault Rifles at Capital Building Stronghold. Remember, you can run this on Legendary for your best chances at some God-rolled Assault Rifles. Otherwise, the Eagle Bearer is a Dark Hours Raid exclusive Assault Rifle, but you can farm for the Chameleon with Adaptive Instincts and, of course, the Capacitor with Capacitance. You need to first unlock that from doing 5 Summit Challenges for the Capacitor, so keep that in mind. It's very easy and you can complete that on any difficulty. Otherwise, the named assault rifles in the bottom left overlay, there's a bunch of good ones. Um, I recommend the Burnout, the Mechanical Animal, and the Test Subject were perfectly in sync for sure. Next up, we got Chess Pieces of Viewpoint Museum. It is a True Suns mission, so if you're looking for that Tardigrade that gives you all that bonus armor and support for your teammates, today is the perfect day to get it because, you know, it gives you an extra 3% drop rate chance when it comes from the faction, which it does, True Suns. And then, of course, there's also Ridgeway's Pride if you've, you know, unlocked it from the Summit Project and completed that project already. Otherwise, always let your teammates know what you're farming for and vice versa. That way, if one of them gets the Ridgeway's Pride to drop and they already have it like myself, I would just just give it to the person that needs it the most, you know, or ask for it first. Next up, we got Empress at Jefferson Trade Center. Side note, you can actually get the Coyote's Mask to drop from the boss Coyote at the end of this mission. Otherwise, Empress is a great set and I got three things to discuss about it. First off, shameless plug, my turret and drone build will be in the top right card now or pin comment below. And that, of course, is going to be three pieces of Empress, two pieces of Hana Yu, and then one piece with the Waveform holster. And then, of course, you want to run the Force Multiplier backpack with perfect combined arms. And then on the chest piece, put Kinetic Momentum and run that with the Capacitor and the Harmony. Next up, you got two named items, the Caesar's Guard chest piece with perfectly calculated, I believe, and then perfectly skilled on the backpack, which is the Battery Pack. And lastly, keep in mind that 10% skill efficiency that Empress gives you for its third bonus piece means that you get 10% skill damage, skill haste, skill duration, skill repair, status effects, skill health, everything, you know, that involves skill you get 10% of, so it's huge. And then of course we got Bellstone next up over here at District Union Arena Stronghold. If you're looking for the everyday carrier of perfectly efficient chest piece, you could farm that today at District Union Arena or a piece for your Foundry Bulwark tank set build. Otherwise, keep in mind the Liquid Engineer with Perfect Bloodsucker backpack is a Dark Zone exclusive, unfortunately. You're gonna have to wait for backpack or Bellstone Armory targeted loot in the DZ to get that. 
or of course a named item cache just like any other DZ exclusive or named item in this game. And that about wraps it up for the DC area. Let's go check out now what we got on the, you know, New York City area. All right, guys, last but not least, we're over here at New York City, Target Alu Highlights, and I'll just go over the gear sets real quick. We got strikers at two bridges. Like I always say, never go more than three pieces with strikers. I, you know, would only recommend it for a Merciless build or an, any LMG build, really, where it has, like, perfect frenzy on it. And then, of course, Ongoing Directive at the Tombs is great. It's a great bleed DPS damage build, and I got two of them for you that I'll give you right now. Now the first one you're going to need Ridgeway's Pride, four pieces of ongoing directive, and the Anarchist Cookbook with Perfect Wicked, which unfortunately I forgot to tell you guys you can go farm at East Mall area over in the east side, I skipped over it, my bad. Of course I run both of these builds with the Carnage with Perfect Sadist, and then of course the Scorpio Exotic Shotgun with Septic Shock. And the second one does not require Ridgeway's Pride, it's just an ongoing directive, four piece, the Badger Tough Backpack with the Creeping Death Talent, and then of course the Vile Mask. My next recommendations for New York City would be Rifles at Wall Street and then MMRs. Those are the only two I'm really going to go over. So Rifles at Wall Street, you can of course farm through the two exotics, the Merciless and the Diamondback. I don't really recommend either or the Merciless. You need to calm down with three-piece striker braced on your chest piece or weapon handling on your gear pieces. And then the Diamondback hits really hard in PvE and PvP but only has five shots. Otherwise, I'd recommend picking up the Baker's Dozen with Perfect Lucky Shot and the Surge with Perfect Spike. Both of those are great named items that drop in the light zone. The Harmony with Perfect and Sync, unfortunately, is a DZ exclusive. And then last but not least, we got MMRs at Liberty Island. So you can farm for the Mantis. The Nemesis is quest only unless you've gotten that already. So keep that in mind when farming MMRs. Otherwise, I recommend Ekim's Longstick with Perfect Ranger and the White Death, which I would roll Boomerang, Ranger, or Rifleman on. And that's really all my recommendations are out here in the New York City area. All right, agents. Well, that was your daily farming guide for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, consider pressing those subscribe, like, and share buttons below. And if not, go ahead and give it a thumbs down. Always remember to check the video description and pinned comment below for links to support my channel. And of course, Course, you know stuff for you guys like gear and weapon spreadsheets weekly vendor reset websites and of course you can do shadow gaming merchandise discord my clan on all platforms shadow crew otherwise you can click the join button below for extra support and exclusive perks to help support my channel and thank you and shout out to everyone that has done so so far thank you and shout out to all five of my channel members anyway guys be sure to stay tuned for more daily division 2 content this is agent shadow signing off i will see you in the next video take care agents